Because <laughs> ahead of releasing his new memoir, the former Prime Minister has spoken to Camilla Tomini to talk about Schoenbein, his time in office and his views on politics. Well, in the interview, he's also asked about his meetings with the late Queen and whether she thought he was a difficult Prime Minister to work with. Let's take a listen. Uh, I Did think you you're... have a bit of a testy relationship with King Charles? Did you get on with the Queen no, and I, Prince Philip very, a bit better uh, than...? No, I think... I, 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 look, I mean, I, I, what's certainly fair to say is that I used to see the Queen every week yes. and that was one of the great, great joys of the job because it was kind of free psychotherapy. Yeah. And there was no, no, no confession so appalling. That, you know, she'd heard it all before, right? Would you say she and had she... her work cut out with you? Compared to other prime ministers, I don't know. She, you'd have to. Well, well, I don't know. But she, she was always. Look, she was. What I can say is, she was always very supportive and kindly, and and full of of really good advice. And so she wouldn't. She wouldn't. You know, I, I sort of have a fair idea of what she thought about lots of things, but um, she wouldn't really reveal her hand much. But she would. She would. You she indicate would you. that she's a bit Brexity. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into her political views, and 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 that wouldn't be right. Well, Boris Johnson also gave his view on the recent revelation that he attempted to stop Meghan Markle and Prince Harry from fleeing the UK. Here's what he had to say about that. Prince Harry and Meghan, in my view. They did. They came to own an event we did for female education. They were brilliant, and she was particularly good and articulate and on it and on the detail. So you got on quite well. And with yeah, 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 yeah. I got on well with, with with both of them. And I also worked with Harry when he did his Invictus Games yes. for disabled veterans in um, in the Olympic Park. And so, in a sort of you know fit of pomposity, um, I thought, you know, this national asset is is leaving our country. Um, I think he's a force on the whole, uh, could be on the whole a force for, for good. I'm going to try and discourage him. And I, so I, I had a pathetic attempt at that. It didn't work. No. Um, and, uh, and, and there you go. I, f I failed to avert Megxit, but I did deliver Brexit. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk to former special advisor to Michael Gove, Charlie Rowley. Mm. Morning to you. I it's, do you know what? It's very entertaining. Mm. It's very entertaining. He is an entertainer. I just don't know how seriously I take any of it. I've got to be honest. Well, I think he's, um, look, he'll go down as a prime minister that obviously had to deal with a very, very difficult time, COVID. He did things that I think were sort of against his better instincts, so locking down, he's a libertarian. Uh, he had to lock down the country two or three times. Uh, he now says that was a, a mistake. Uh, and I think a lot of people would agree, actually. Oh. The first lockdown, absolutely fine, the right thing to do. Um, but the subsequent ones, I think pressure from, from within, uh, he's now obviously regretting that. The vaccine rollout will be his, his legacy. Um, but he does have a, a way with words. Um, uh, we miss, I think, uh, him for his uh, uh, optimism and for his ability to put a good spin on something to make us feel good about ourselves. Mm. But we don't necessarily miss the chaos, I think, that, that came with it. So it'll be an interesting read. Um, 738 pages, I think he was... Uh, oh, it's a big book, down, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Last night. So, um, uh, how much of that is sort of reflective of him and his own sort of self analysis of what went wrong? How much of the blame for the chaos that you know, ensued within his government and the, and the Conservative Party uh, that lies at his door? We'll have to, to wait and see just how reflective he is um, on that. But, you know, it was, a, it was a very, very difficult time. And, you know, whether he was equipped to be Prime Minister for that particular moment in time, having won that huge majority on the back of tapping into uh, what the country was feeling, which mm. was getting Brexit done, uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Sorry, just on, on that, and I'm quite intrigued, because he's busy saying, we're all being dragged back into, into the EU. It's, if he was saying these things, whether you believe him or not, if he was saying these things before the election, that might have had an impact. But he kept shtum. Uh, well, he um, was able in 2019, I'm uh, just getting my uh, dates yeah, in the road, yeah. um, uh, to um, you know, say to the country, look, we haven't dealt with Brexit. And there was two years of a parliament under Theresa May that just couldn't decide what yeah, kind of why Brexit... Why didn't they do it in the last election? He could have helped Rishi Sunak out, couldn't he? Well, I think um, uh, you'd have to ask um, uh, Rishi and uh, whether he thought that Boris might be a help or a hindrance to how much he wanted him on the campaign. And to be fair, you know, Boris did come out at the end of the campaign, um, as he did for Theresa back in back in the day, to try and uh, g up the troops. Um, 
Uh, but I think it's very difficult once you've been a former prime minister to then try and help mm. um, uh, your, your predecessor when perhaps one of the big things that Boris was keen about, which was levelling up, uh, and he created a whole new department about levelling up, and, and Rishi, I think, didn't take that agenda um, as seriously as Boris did. It, it could be quite difficult. But to lots, lots of people would say, especially in the Red Wall, that Boris failed. There was no levelling up. Well, I think COVID, which is what Boris continues to sort of, you know, fall back on, which is, is you know, one of the things that sort of shut down the economy, uh, oh. that's one of the things that I think he will always say, sort of cut off that sort of growth, cut off that sort of, um, you know, idea and ambition to really sort of level up the country. I mean, Boris is never short of ideas and infrastructure projects that he wanted, whether it was Boris Island or whether it was, uh, obviously, you know, we had the brilliant Boris bikes in London. Um, but I think he had lots of ideas right across the country. Um, uh, even a, a bridge linking, I think, Scotland and, and Northern Ireland at how one point. Ever, which... How much of it ever came off? I mean, that, that's part of the thing. He, he comes up with some sort of weird and wonderful ideas, but then it must be people turning around saying, Prime Minister, we can't implement it, it's not practical, or we can't afford it, or all three. Well, and one of those was HS2, obviously. He was, yeah. uh, I think, a bit of an advocate for that because he wanted to make sure that you're, you're, you're getting that regional inequality and that linking up between the North and, and, and the South. Um, and it ended up obviously being too costly and overrun, and that's why, why Rishi ditched it. Do you miss him, Charlie? Do you think we'll see him back in politics? Well, there was a brilliant um, end of the interview uh, last night, and whether um, uh, Camilla asks him the same question, we'll see um, with Beta Breath tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning. Um, I'll be tuned in. Um, uh, where he was asked, is this, you know, the last of Boris Johnson? Is this book the sort of the final chapter, as it were, in his sort of political history? And he um, ducked the question again by sort of saying he's always you know, described the chances of that are coming back as a, a, a equal as a reincarnated olive or something like that. Um, but, so you never say never with Boris. There will always no. be, I think, a role for Boris in politics, whether it's on the international stage, whether it's continuing to, to write columns, whether it's still being part of the discussion. But I do think he has probably, like most of the country, has sensed and will be wanting to seize upon uh, the failures of this Labour government, um, which seems to have had a few you know, bumps and run-ins already, it's just three months in. And I think he'll be wanting to be part of the conversation to see what happens next at the, maybe at the next election, to um, steer this country in a direction that he would arguably want to see it go in. That's interesting, though, because that... Is that not self-serving? And in, in it's back to my other point. If he, if he wanted the Conservatives to be in government, he could have given them a lot more SWAT and, a, and a, a much better chance to still be in government. Or would he rather they were out and then he's got a chance to take back the, to, back the reins? Well, he might have... Um, uh, be honest. Well, there's the... You know, absolutely, there's, always, um, there's always more you can do. I think everybody would accept that. I mean, I think during the last campaign, there's more that any Conservative could have mm. done. But I think you might have... He might have read the writing on the wall and thought, well, because of, obviously, the chaotic nature in which he left and the chaos that sort of ensued, um, I think the Conservative Party was always going to lose the next election. He made that calculation and therefore thought uh, it would be a waste of political capital, maybe, to be over-enthusiastic mm. about it. Um, and, and to be and, fair to him, he probably saw Rishi Sunak as a backstabber, didn't he? He didn't particularly want to, to come out in support of, of someone that he would see through him out. Yeah, and they, and they must have had, you know, political differences. So, you mm. know, Boris obviously was the, the architect and, and leader of Brexit and, you know, um, uh, whatever you think about the Windsor framework, for example, which Rishi sort of negotiated and, uh, you know, it could have been a, a, an appear, could have appeared like, you know, we were getting uh, back closer to, to the EU, something that Boris might have opposed. Mm. Uh, scrapping HS2, as I say, something that Boris uh, 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 was an advocate of, not having the same... Uh, gusto for levelling up, which Boris had, which Rishi uh, obviously didn't. I think all of those things showed that they were on perhaps slightly different uh, paths politically, mm. um, and therefore Boris might not have been able to support Rishi as, um, as much as Rishi might have wanted uh, towards the end of the election, when obviously the wheels had come off that Conservative Party campaign. OK. Charlie, good to see you.